when a customer goes out, or even we ourselves, when we are going out as a customer, uh, three things that they always are the criteria. One is they want the quality. Mm-hmm. Second is they want the price. And they want the fastest delivery that they can. So with, between these three variables, I've often uh, kind of realized it that, uh, you know, although every customer wants all three, yeah. they usually have two that, uh, uh, something that they crave for. The Industrial Sage Executive Series, sharing the stories behind game-changing executives, their organizations, and insights into today's industry challenges. Well, welcome to this episode of Industrial Sage on our executive series. I have Mr. Nimit Patel, who is the CEO of Hydraulic Manifolds USA. Nimit, thank you so much for joining me today on Industrial Sage. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to to jump into today's uh, topic, hear about you and your story. So for those who aren't familiar with Hydraulic Manifolds USA, uh, what what exactly do you guys do? What we, we are the manufacturing engineering assembly for one of the critical component in the hydraulic industry called hydraulic manifolds. Um, to simplify, um, you know, relating it to similar to electronics, there are circuit boards. We actually lay out the hydraulic integrated circuits inside a piece of metal. Excellent. That that sounds fun. Uh, what are some of the uh, what are, what are some of the top applications that you uh, or use cases um, that you guys uh, that your product fits? Well, um, actually, wherever there is hydraulics, there is uh, you know our product would be most likely be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for some of the fun places uh, from Disney World oh. to to NASA. Uh, you know, there's simulations from uh, small tow trucks. Uh, to large industrial farming equipments. Um, you know, basically, uh, we also have, we make uh, big manifolds for the high-end bridge applications uh, and also for oil and gas industry. So pretty much uh, it's a very, um, what should I call it, a widespread application. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something which is usually uh, customized, made to order and uh, based off the designs and based off the needs of the customer. Excellent. So let's jump into your story. Uh, tell me, um, you know, I, I kind of want to hear a little bit of y- your career journey. How, you know, take me back to, you know, what was that first job or how, like, how did you get into the industry? What did that look like? Well, <clears throat> I... Uh, kind of jumped into this industry from uh, a totally from a different segment of the industry where I was, uh, but uh, you know, I means uh, it was a challenging. So I basically graduated from Georgia Institute of Technology okay. as a computer engineer. Um, you know, from there, uh, my journey went into. I graduated around nine eleven. Uh, so from there, there was a very much, a, a, you know. A, hard to find jobs. Um, you know, I was actually looking for a job at the time. I worked part-time up as sales, uh, up in various retails, um, you know, T-Mobile, um, trying to develop my communication skills. From there, I went into the government um, where I had a mentor, essentially part of my journey. Uh, I think I have a, uh, you know, at every single milestone, I had a mentor that uh, basically helped me shape my, my journey to uh, essentially what I am today. Um, so in spite of uh, uh, changes with the discipline, uh, from what I learned to what I did as a, uh, in the industry as a job to where I am as an entrepreneur, um, you know, it's been different, but uh, essentially I was able to relate um, one part of the discipline to another mm-hmm. and was able to take lessons to learn. So as much as, some may find it that it was a 180 degree turn, but <laughs> always uh, people, process, and technology is what I kind of consider is that each and every organization is made out of. And uh, to where I am, uh, you know, with my background, I've been working for the government, working as a government consultant, working as a project manager, to as I went up the career path and to the entrepreneurship today, 
um, you know, means uh, essentially it's those three variables, people, process, and technology is what you need to have a handle on to be able to, uh, what I consider every organization has. People, process, and technology. I'm going to write that down. I mean, yeah, 100%. That makes a lot of sense. So, but you, you mentioned, uh, I think I heard you say the word entrepreneur, or entrepreneurship. Is that, did you say that? All right. So what I am very curious about is um, what did that jump look like? How, how did, what was that moment where you said, hey, I want, you know, this is the, this is the direction change that I want to make. What did that look like? Well, there was a whole bunch of mixed feelings, um, you know, anxiousness, um, I guess all, all sorts of, there was excitement and there was nervousness. There was a, a kind of a, like, okay, I want to do it, but uh, there was that, okay, what, I'm not successful. So it's, uh, it's, 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 I think that was more of a, and people call it, it's all, it's all normal. So you, uh, Hydraulic Manifolds, is, I mean, you founded that company? Uh, negative. I actually purchased this business three years ago. Okay. Uh, the old organization was known as Selling Precision, which has been in existence since 1971. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, so essentially the manufacturing and, and the making of the, the manifolds was there, but it wasn't really highlighted into the industry and adding up more to the technology aspect and then defining the process and getting ISO certification has been my contribution to okay. this place. So Nim, you, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, a, a very dangerous word that begins with an E and it was entrepreneurship. So this gets a lot of people in trouble, I'm joking. But um, you, you mentioned that, uh, what, what, what did that look like for you? What was that thought that crossed your mind that said, hey, I think I, I, uh, I, think I wanna go do this? So before um, I became an entrepreneur, I was uh, doing project management for a um, government consulting company, Buzal and Hamilton. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, it was uh, essentially at, at the time I, uh, you know, had, uh, you know, means I guess it was more like my genes. I do have uh, entrepreneurial genes. So I, I wanted to do something. Uh, you know, basically push the limits, uh, test myself to the to the the maximum potential that I can deliver. Uh, you know, and uh, essentially, that's kind of was the probably the seed for all this. Um, you know, I means uh, I wanted to do something, and then you know, basically trying to pick this industry was uh, more like you know um, wasn't uh, uh, you know it, it it wasn't circumstantial. Well, kind of it was circumstantial, but also I wanted to get something that is engineering discipline. I wanted to get something which is Monday to Friday. Don't do anything like, you know, like a retail, mm. but wanted to apply my skills. Yeah. My talent. So that's basically where I picked up uh, manufacturing, of course, three, four years ago. I had one of the key buzz and uh, realizing that uh, very many people are coming, going out of the manufacturing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wanted to jump in and uh, essentially for those same reasons is to say, okay, nobody else wants to do it. Realizing it's a challenge, uh, you know, means uh, let me kind of uh, test myself and see if I can make it happen. That's awesome. I, I love that. So, um, so can you tell me about those first, when, after you made a decision to do that, what, you know, um, and you started going down the road, what, what was that like? Well, I was looking, um, you know, means at the time, uh, you know, I was doing government consulting. I wanted to see if I can start something on my own. Um, you know, I went through uh, browsing around something that has a legacy, yeah. uh, you know, and something that has a potential for growth, uh, something that, you know, I can uh, kind of, uh, you know, give a new makeover, yeah. um, you know, and then essentially excel. Um, so, you know, basically th this is the place where there was a legacy, there was a history, uh, you know, there was something about this place, uh, you know, which basically magically clicked and, uh, you know, it's, it's essentially in the manufacturing world, 
you know, there is a lot of the stuff is like, you know, they're like commodity type products. Mm -hmm. There's also some of the stuff is like, like a standard items. And there's also more like a very custom item. Yeah. So, so this is kind of a blend right up on that crossover uh, where we have a product, uh, which is called the hydraulic manifolds. It's also somewhat of a customized. So essentially it does have its own set of challenges. But at the end of the day, it's also not uh, a shelved items like, uh, you know, means uh, like regular like cloth hangers or pick anything, which is like, a, uh, you know, that would be of, uh, you know, basically be very much competitive. So we can somewhat put a flavor to our own, uh, you know, to how we cater the customers and how we deliver the, the product to the customers and essentially create that uh, niche space is uh, what I have been working towards. That's awesome. That's, um, and, and so it, when, when did you acquire the company? You said it was three years ago? Correct. So, that, so 2016, 2017? Okay, yeah, I guess we're in 2020 now, so I, I, gotta do, I can do math sometimes. February, um, February 2017. February 2017, that's, that's awesome. So, um, you know, uh, Obviously, that's you know, three years is, is is great. Obviously, still, I'm sure you have a lot more that you plan on, you wanted to do, and you know, and, and growing it. Um, you know, now that you've kind of, you know, you've got some uh, pretty good experience with it. Um, what are some of the challenges that you see in the industry with the industries that you serve? <clears throat> well, um, kind of going back to people, process, and technology. Yeah. So um, in, in my first year of journey uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, of course, this is, a, a, as I said, it's a new domain mm -hmm. for me. It's a, it's a new business for me. Um, you know, it means I was basically, uh, so initially I started was observing to what, uh, what's, what's happening, what's going on, um, you know, and then essentially I, kind of listed down risks and issues that, uh, you know, are defined within the people process and technology. Uh, you know, every manufacturing has, um, what should I call it, a, a, a drain mm -hmm. um, where uh, that's why we talk more about improvements and continuous improvements within manufacturing more so than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is a lot of waste we talk about lean processing, we talk about 5S, we talk about all of these things about Kanbans and you know, it's all about to help uh, you know, how to efficiently uh, work in between the people process and applying the technology uh, to help bind the people in the process. So my first year again was all about collecting data, all about observing, identifying the weaknesses, um, putting the circles around what are the biggest weaknesses, and then coming up with a plan of action. Uh, so at the end of the year is, uh, you know, realized it where some of the big, biggest weaknesses were as part of the core production, and as part of uh, processing as a start to end. Um, you know, with that started, uh, you know, evolving the, the technology side and the process side. And, uh, you know, that is in this last two years, uh, we have evolved, um, not to, again, where I want to be, but evolved quite a bit where we have some of the high-end production uh, equipments uh, to the process that goes with it. Because, uh, of course, uh, you know, having the right hands, but also having a right process is important. Uh, and I think that is an enabling factor because uh, right now in the industry where the talent pool is becoming less and less available, yeah. um, you know, we, we, and then we are challenged with the minimum wage increasing, the talent is going down, the skills are going down, and then we are at the highest uh, kind of, uh, you know, in the challenge of productivity, uh, where there is external entities like uh, third world countries are trying to compete Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, challenging us. The, on the other part of it, uh, you know, is the strengths of the U.S. manufacturing has been that we are the home of Apple and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. they are the home of the the kind of uh, uh, technology, uh, you know, monsters and Google, of course. Um, so, so we, um, you know, uh, my background of computer engineering, my background of uh, project management, um, have, uh, you know, I have enabled uh, a lot of data analysis, data uh, collection uh, in trying to leverage technology and creating a robust process. Uh, not just at where we are right now at ISO 9001, 2015, mm -hmm. but uh, also trying to have a more intense continuous improvement plan and uh, try to attain highest level of productivity and uh, continue to improve. Excellent. That's the name of the game. Um, so, you know, just to, as kind of a final question here, and I, you kind of answered it a little bit, but as far as those challenges in the industry, how are you helping, um, or how, how within your organization are you staying ahead of your competitors? I think you mentioned that, that I think you said that this was a relatively commoditized, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a bit of a commodity. So obviously the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the people and the, and the technology and, and creating that, that innovation through lean process, making things, you know, better, faster, cheaper for lack of better words. Um, how are you guys staying ahead of the pack? Uh, and, and, and what are those innovations that you are you concretely bringing to your customers? Well, there's three things. Uh, when, when a customer goes out, or even we ourselves, when we are going out as a customer, uh, three things that they always are the criteria. One is they want the quality. Mm -hmm. Second is they want the price. And they want the fastest delivery that they can. So with, between these three variables, I've often uh, kind of realized it, that, uh, you know, although every customer wants all three yeah. to the best that they can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, means they usually have two that uh, is more of, uh, uh, should I say, that, uh, you know, basically uh, is uh, something that they crave for. Uh, you know, uh, to, to sometimes one, sometimes two. Uh, the third element is usually with the vendor. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if you as a customer would like to get uh, something for the least amount of price uh, and for the best quality, then you would say, okay, I'll wait for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or if you say, okay, I would like to get this uh, today at, or early morning tomorrow or in, in the fastest amount of time frame, and uh, of course, quality is something that you cannot compromise. Yeah, uh, you know, you're going to pay for it. Pay for it. Yeah. So, so essentially, um, you know, means from the customer standpoint of view, these are how they gauge every vendor. Uh, you know, so for me, as a you know, trying to look at the customers. Uh, you know, what are their needs, how they, uh, you know, see us as a value vendor mm -hmm. uh, between the three variables where we have to play around and uh, essentially, you know, ensure that the relationship with the customer uh, is, uh, you know, is of more importance than the actual one product that we deliver yeah. uh, to so uh, essentially having that faith, that confidence, because uh, we are, again, uh, as I said, custom made to order type of products. We engineer our, uh, the products. Customer comes up with a very core concept designs and we help them uh, kind of, uh, you know, see the shape and the size and how it's going to work. Then they would say, okay, yes, it will work. It won't work. This is what they need. A few changes to make it happen. Then we actually manufacture it. And then we also provide the complete assembly. So in that whole journey process, uh, oftentimes uh, to what I've seen is customer craves for the quality, customer craves for, uh, uh, you know, they're reasonable in their deliveries and they're reasonable in their pricings. So depending on the applications, depending on the type of a product, we make some manifolds which are like hardly 10 bucks to yeah. also make manifolds. Yeah. which are more than ten thousand yeah. dollars per piece so it's a it's, it's a very big spectrum of applications as i said and then a very big spectrum of industry 
uh, we have some OEMs uh, to some distributors and some product integrators. So essentially, our product is not the complete machinery, but then you are, we are more of a, 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 of a product that integrates at, at, to a bigger product. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so just, you know, it, so from what I took there is really that, that customer experience piece is really, you know, you mentioned, you know, the, 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 the triangle that everyone talks about. I want, customers want things better, faster, cheaper. You know, pick two. <laughs> you, you can't have all three, you got to pick two. Um, you know, and, and it sounds like just really looking at that whole customer experience, that buying experience and making it good for them, listening to them and, and bringing, being a solution provider versus just like, yeah, I'll take one of those and five of these. That, that, that's what I heard. Exactly. So, excellent. Well, um, so, I, mean, I, I really appreciate the time uh, here uh, with Industrial Sage. If anybody would love to learn more about you, um, you know, what's the best place? Uh, I, I presume go to your website or, or some social media. What, what's your URL? So uh, hydraulicmanifolds.com is our uh, web domain. Um, you know, it means uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, uh, you know, handle hydraulic manifolds, H manifolds. Um, you know, those are, of course, more on the higher end. Uh, you know, we are trying to kind of also uh, publish uh, a lot of our products on LinkedIn. Yep. Um, that you can kind of also follow me up on. And uh, of course, the, we still work with uh, traditional technologies of with faxes, phones, and uh, emails. So, uh, you know, if, if anybody out there uh, wants uh, a value partner uh, where they want to uh, kind of find somebody on their side uh, to help them solve their issues, uh, you know, help them design a manifold, uh, having some experiences, not just some, but years of experiences that we have <laughs> to bring on the table, uh, you know, means we are there to help. And uh, we are not just kind of a, uh, you know, uh, a machine shop that just drills holes and makes you a manifold. But uh, we are uh, somebody who would basically follow the industry guidelines and we will help you critique your circuit and design to identify if you're going to try to run into issues down the road. We have specialized tool sets that helps us design manifolds uh, that are very popular up in Parker and Rexrock is uh, uh, called uh, MD Tools uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we have engineers just sitting on those tool sets designing manifolds all day long every day. Um, that not just helps us design manifolds, that also helps kind of ensure the products that will be uh, ready for manufacturing would come out right. Um, you know, we have enhanced uh, capabilities to offer in terms of manufacturing, uh, high-end machining centers, um, and uh, of course, we offer assemblies and functional testings before the, uh, anybody sees the product in front of them. Excellent. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of areas, a lot of ways that companies can get to know you, learn more about your products and services. Nimit, thank you so much uh, for taking some time out of your busy day today to spend some time with us so we can learn a little bit more about you. And um, you know, if anyone would like to learn more about you, they can. Go check you guys out on your website. We'll make sure we have all those links uh, on the show notes um, for the uh, under the video and the podcast. Awesome, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so another great episode here, uh, rounding out our Industrial Sage Expert Series. Um, again, I'm, I'm really enjoying these interviews. Just learning you know, a big thing, actually, that's been kind of coming out as as we interview more executives is, you know. Um, this entrepreneurship piece, I think, is, is, is very cool. Whether it's somebody who's acquired a, a company like Nimit has or someone who's in, you know, a CEO coming up through, you know, you know the corporate world, there's, def there's, this, there's, this, there's this entrepreneurial spirit that I think that is, that is uh, very interesting. And I think it's, it's a, sort of that, that common thread. I think uh, Nimit mentioned it well. He said that there was, uh, he had the entrepreneur gene. Um, so, anyways, if you would like to check out more about them, you can take a look at their website, uh, uh, Hydraulic Manifolds USA. We'll make sure we have all the information in the show notes. You can check them out there. So, that's all I got for today. Thank you so much for listening or watching uh, this episode of Industrial Sage. I'm Danny Gonzalez. I'll be back next week with another episode of Industrial Sage.
Industrial Sage is an open platform where companies can showcase their expertise and solutions to a captive audience of industrial professionals. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. You can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, please leave us a review. Want us to tell your story? Go to industrialsage.com. This week's episode was produced by Rika Wiersma, filming by Donovan Jones, editing by Rika Wiersma, music composed by Oliver Michael, and executive producers Danny Gonzalez and David Karen. This is the Industrial Sage Executive Series.